Good evening, Commonwealth, and thanks for watching the Channel 2 News. I'm Ashley McDowell. Let's take a look at tonight's top stories. Teachers gather once again to address the concerns with the salary pay cut. Also tonight, Bell has been set for a mail caught trafficking ice. And USCIS will soon be closed for good in the Philippines. We have more on that. In sports, the Little League baseball season closes with an explosion of runs. Stay with us. These stories and more are next. Get Dad the perfect gift now. The Samsung Galaxy S10 Plus for as low as $38.50 per month when you join the Now program. Come in before Father's Day and receive a free JBL speaker and Galaxy earbuds. That's over $150 worth of free gifts on us. Happy Father's Day from Docomo Pacific. Better together. Some conditions apply. Hoffa Day, Tiruwami, and good evening, Commonwealth. Today is Monday, June 10, 2019. Breaking news, more developments on the cut in salary increases of public school system employees. It's scary how much power they have to keep us in the dark if they wanted to. Teachers and concerned citizens gathered this afternoon to rally against the 50% pay cut public school system employees will be receiving on their salary increases. I came to show my support uh, at the last teachers meeting. There were a lot of questions about uh, what happened to the money, what's going on with PSS's budget. Uh, at this point, they're on track to only receive 50% of what was appropriated for them, which is uh, way below, uh, way below even the, the proportionate reduction that would be allowed by law, um, according to what the governor has announced. And, you know, there I, I appreciate and um, fully support their cause for more transparency. That's something that we in the legislature and the minority have also been urging. More transparency. That is exactly what many of the teachers are asking for and will be expressing as there is another meeting being held today at Marianas High School cafeteria. The thing that I would be pushing at that meeting is that we demand all, all financial documents of how money was spent um, you know, since we declared this financial emergency and even before, but demanding all of those documents and asking that they have some kind of third party verification, a CPA or the Office of the Public Auditor. Um, we need verification on top of them starting to be open about what's happening with our money. Um, for me, that's my only demand. Other teachers might, you know, might share that they want more from PSS as far as something other than the, the salary cuts. Um, so again, I can only speak for myself. That's what I'm going to push at the meeting. That's what I'm going to suggest. Um, I think the budget cuts are a symptom of, of the bigger issue, which is no transparency, no verification. Agencies cannot communicate and work together and do what's best for the people if, if every time there's an issue, it's going to be their word against my word. No documentation, no paperwork, no, no honesty, no disclosure. It can't work that way. Everything that's going on is just not right. I mean, there's no reason why families, you know, the teachers and everybody else in the community that are earning less than six-figure income, there's no reason why they should be suffering. This administration needs to come out and tell the people, what, where is the, the community benefit fund? $17.9 million, where is it? And then there's, there's another $20 million that's expected to come in on October 1st, 2019. 
Where's the $400,000 MV Luta? All of these things, Larissa Larson, the former Secretary of Finance, ended the fiscal year 2018 report to the senators and the legislature that we are in deficit of more than $20 million. And we all know that during the election, they were all hyping up about how great the economy is and everything. And every, every time they come out, it's all about you two. Well, let's get real here. This is corruption, and they need to come out and speak to the people and tell everybody what happened to the money. There's no reason why that the community should be suffering. This administration needs to be held accountable. And as far as I'm concerned, he should be impeached. And money may not be the only issue PSS is facing. PSS, from what I understand, is not only looking at salary cuts, but bigger class sizes, shorts in school weeks once the new school year begins. Um, this is a community-wide issue. It affects so many of our families, all of our children in the public school system. And I think we should all stand up with our PSS teachers and staff and stand with them. Reporting for KSPN, I'm Ashley McDowell. In court, Bell has been set for a Filipino male involved in trafficking ice, also known as methamphetamine. 33-year-old Junior Fernando Cadag was arrested on June 7th for the charges of trafficking of a controlled substance and illegal possession of a controlled substance, crystal methamphetamine. Today in the courtroom of Associate Judge Kenneth Govindo, cash bill has been set at $50,000. A preliminary hearing is set for June 17th, 2019 at 1.30 p.m. And an arraignment is set for June 24th at 9 a.m. The United States Citizenship and Immigration Services, USCIS, in Manila, Philippines, will be closing its doors for good come July. According to the Department of Homeland Security, on July 5, 2019, USCIS is permanently closing its field office located in Manila, Philippines. The U.S. Embassy in Manila will assume the responsibility for certain limited services that were previously provided by USCIS individuals residing in the Philippines. A release from the U.S. Department of Homeland Security states that now individuals who were previously assisted by the USCIS Manila office that includes people in the Philippines, New Guinea, Micronesia, Marshall Islands, Palau, Kiribati, Tuvalu, Fiji, Vanuatu, Solomon Islands, Tonga, Samoa, Wallace, Fatuna, New Caledonia, Pitcairn Islands, overseas French territories of French Polynesia, and most islands in the Pacific region must follow specific filing instructions through the U.S. Embassy in Manila. This includes Forms I-130, Petition for Alien Relative, Form I-131A, Form I-407, Form I-730, Form N-400, and Filipino World War II Veterans Parole Program. More information about the U.S. Embassy Manila is available on the Embassy website. Also, for more information on other immigration benefits, visit USCIS.gov. KSPN reached out to the Philippine Honorary Consul here in Saipan, Glacerio Arago, for a comment, and he says he has no information he can share at this moment. The Commonwealth Utilities Corporation is informing the public of an emergency water service interruption in the Kagman area. A release states a leak detection crew is searching to determine if the problem is caused by a lean leak on the distribution line in the Kagman area. Therefore, certain areas will be isolated, causing low water pressure to no water at this time. Restoration of services should be expected once the leak is located and repairs are made. CUC is asking the public to conserve water during the drought season to prevent CUC water wells from running dry. If you experience any leaks, contact the CUC call center at 664-4282. Coming up, we head over to a local eatery to hear about a local chef's. Stay tuned. Get the phone plan you're looking for at it &E. Stay connected with the strongest, widest, and most reliable network in the Marianas. Stream, share, play, shop, and surf the web with super fast 4G LTE data. Whether you need just a few gigabytes of data to get by, or if you want to go further with unlimited data, there's a plan for you. You'll always get the best price. Visit any it &E store or call us to learn more. it &E. Explore your world.
Bubba Gump Shrimp Company opens daily at 11 a.m. Located on Beach Road in the heart of Garapan. Thanks for tuning in. I am here at Cha Cafe and Bistro with the executive chef, Joe DeLeon Guerrero. Hi. Hi, thank you for having me today. It's a Absolutely. pleasure to have you guys over. Absolutely. So I know that this restaurant just recently opened mm -hmm. this upstairs dinner park, correct? Can yes. you tell me a little bit about the actual restaurant and it opening this, what food you have? Also, with the, uh, with the restaurant, we want it to be a tomorrow-inspired French bistro. Um, we didn't want to go too much on the fusion side, but we wanted to take tomorrow food and do them with French chutney, or take uh, French dishes and add a little local flair to them. And so I hear that you were born and raised here, but you have left Island for a few years, got some training in the mainland, came back a couple times. Can you tell me a little bit about yourself? You're very experienced in, as a chef. Okay. Um, well, I originally left. Uh, Saipan back in 06 to go to Hawaii, supposed to go to school. Um, had too much fun, never made it to a class, needed a job, started working in a restaurant. Um, after about four and a half years working in Hawaii, I got a job offer to come back to Saipan. Uh, and I came back and I was working at the Hyatt for about six years. Uh, I decided to leave again, uh, not because uh, the job was, you know, I, I enjoyed my job, but I just felt I was getting a bit stagnant and I wanted to learn more. And so this time I decided to go off to the East Coast as far away from Saipan as I possibly could uh, just because, uh, why not? And what kind of experience did you get when you were on the East Coast? Um, so when I was on the East Coast, I actually um, went to and graduated from the Culinary Institute of America. Um, it was up in Hyde Park, uh, New York. Uh, when I was done with my schooling there, I ended up going down to um, Northern Virginia to work for at, at the time a two mission star restaurant called the Inn of Washington under um, executive chef and owner Patrick O'Connor. Uh, that year I came in, uh, they were open for, we're celebrating the 40, year, uh, 40 years opening, and uh, we were able to get the third mission star as well right before I left. So that was a lot of fun. That's as well. exciting. So you got to be um, get some cooking experience in a different mm -hmm. way, yes. per se. Uh, yeah, when I first uh, started in Hawaii and came back to Saipan, it was actually under Japanese cuisine. I did uh, Japanese food for a total of 11 years, eight of which was as a sushi chef. And when I went off to the States, I, ended, I wanted to change my focus from uh, Japanese cuisine to um, a little more Western style. And so I ended up choosing French uh, just because uh, techniques and uh, flavor profiles between French and Japanese end up uh, you know borrowing concepts from each other so i thought it'd be a good way to kind of uh, you know use what i've learned before as a way you know as an easier way to kind of build a better foundation for what i want to do now that's amazing so it sounds like you can make multiple different dishes mm. from your experience here in saipan and in the mainland so what brought you back to saipan the second time so actually what, came, what brought me back to saipan the second time was um, I left the States, I was in Palau, um, I'm, you know, uh, for some family reasons. And when I got to Palau, uh, I ended up helping open up a restaurant there. Uh, my partner, John, who owns Cha, um, he kind of convinced me to come back uh, to help open up the restaurant. And I really did miss Saipan. Uh, I missed the food, I missed a lot of my family, I missed my friends. And, uh, you know, I thought it was a great opportunity to come back, kind of uh, share everything that I've learned. Um, you know, and help out with the, the other chefs here, and you know, we'll That's see where it goes. Yeah, so you plan on staying here for a while, I'd say. I do, I do. Back at home grounds, and kind of bringing all your experience and your knowledge back to home plate. Yes, yeah. Um, you know, like I said, it's, there's nothing like coming back home. You know, as much as I enjoyed the States, uh, Saipan is, will always be home. Well, thank you, Joe, and thanks for sharing with us a little bit of your experience, you know, and how you've gone to where you are today, complete circle, back at home. We appreciate you kind of sharing with the public also, one of the top chefs. No, of course. Thank you. I am, like I said, I'm glad to be back. I'm glad to have you guys over. You know, I uh, just want to be able to make good food a little more accessible to the public. Yeah. Absolutely. All right, and thanks for tuning in for this special segment, getting highlights from one of the local chefs at Cha. Thank you, Ashley. On Guam, lawsuits challenge how overtime is calculated. KUM reports. 
Off today's cinema, I'm Jason Salas. Calling it long overdue, Adloop announced the release of $1.5 million in past overtime payments. The compensation follows lawsuits by GPD and DOC that successfully challenge how OT is calculated. Here's more. The governor's office released a statement saying police and corrections officers deserve to be made whole for the work they put in many years ago. It was customs officers, though, who first challenged the local government policy. Law enforcement personnel are typically scheduled for 43-hour work weeks, and under GovGuam policy, overtime wasn't calculated until after the 43 hours, unlike the 40 hours as set by the Federal Minimum Wage and Hour Act. The Guam Supreme Court ruled in favor of the CQA officers in 2010, and they've since been paid. The GPD and DOC officers then filed similar legal action, which they also won, but haven't received the back pay until now. Governor Leon Guerrero credits her fiscal discipline team for finding the money. Police Chief Steve Ignacio. Of course, you know, when, when people have been waiting uh, many years to be compensated, and they know that the day finally comes, you know, of course, uh, there, there's always a big smile on their face. And, uh, you know, of course, it, 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 it helps with, uh, you know, boost uh, their, their confidence in the government and the governor and uh, their leaders, they're going to make right uh, the, the, the wrongs that, that need to be corrected. In a statement, DOC Director Samantha Brennan also thanked corrections officers for their commitment. Since the 2010 Supreme Court ruling, local statute has been amended to mirror the federal law. For Guam's News Network, I'm Nestor Liconto. A Guam visa waiver for Philippine citizens may be closer than ever to becoming reality. That's a word from Adelope Senior Advisor Carl Gutierrez, who says for the first time, the top two leaders of the Philippines and Guam, President Rodrigo Duterte and Guam Governor Lulian Guerrero, will join forces to convince the federal government to approve a Guam visa waiver for Filipinos. The goal here is for Governor Lulian Guerrero to travel with President Duterte to go to Washington, D.C. and press the issue. But now, at 38 to 40 percent of the Metro Manila area being in middle income to high income, they, well, they have monies, they have jobs, they're not going to overstay here, they have jobs to go back to. So that's the new dynamics of why the, it behooves the United States to include the Philippines. He says he's met several times with high-ranking Duterte officials, including the executive secretary and acting president, with whom he will collaborate with Adeloupe to lobby in Washington. Gutierrez says the visa waiver for Filipinos would be a huge tourism boost. Philippine Airlines, United and Cebu Pacific should start thinking about what kind of aircraft to be flying here if that. So I say maybe 100,000 the first year will get on that plane and come here. Can you imagine that? And they have more money than, than those coming out of China right now or even some parts of Korea. Philippine arrivals average about 25,000 a year, with Gutierrez also drumming up support with the Philippine people through media coverage and in newspapers. Make sure to check us out on YouTube at youtube.com slash KUN News for the very latest Guam News headlines. All right, thank you, Jason. Coming up, junior tennis players, make sure your passport is valid because v Fiji would like you to visit. And that's in the KSPN Sports Report next. Dad, the perfect gift now. The Samsung Galaxy S10 Plus for as low as $38.50 per month when you join the Now program. Come in before Father's Day and receive a free JBL speaker and Galaxy earbuds. That's over $150 worth of free gifts on us. Happy Father's Day from Docomo Pacific. Better together. Some conditions apply. Good evening and welcome to Channel 2 Health Talk. I'm Dr. Tony Stearns of Marianas Medical Center. Tonight we begin a series of health talks on nutrition and the important role that good nutrition plays in health and longevity. We all want to be healthy and to live a long time and I'm convinced that whether or not each of us achieves that goal depends in large part on us and what we choose to do. It depends on the choices we make each and every day throughout life. Whether or not we smoke, drink alcohol to excess or take drugs, whether or not we exercise, wear our seat belts, practice safe sex, all of these choices have an effect on our long-term health because each has consequences that can be either good or bad for our health. 
I believe that in terms of health and disease and how long we live, the most important choice we make throughout life has to do with what we put in our mouths, what we choose to eat or not eat, and how much we eat. Eating more fruits and vegetables, whole grains and nuts, and cutting way back on animal products, fats, and processed grains and sugar is the key to healthier eating and healthier living. In the upcoming weeks and months, I'll be addressing these issues of choice and I'll be offering suggestions as to what each and every one of us can do to make healthier choices, to improve our health and to increase the chance that we live longer and healthier. Remember, it's never too late to make changes in your lifestyle and it's never too late to start eating healthier. I'm Dr. Tony Stearns of Marianas Medical Center. Join me again next week for another Channel 2 Health Talk. Buenas sports fans. Buenas sports fans, the 2019 Little League baseball season ended with a bang. Saturday, McDonald's snuck past the Comets while the Little Legals took out the Falcons and that set up the season finale on a picture-perfect Sunday afternoon. This weekend, Capitol Hill turned into the island's biggest playground. Top of the first inning, McDonald's wastes no time erupting. Casey Chambers scores on a wild pitch. A two-out rally, Isaiah Mesa cracks a ground rule, double to right field. Acosta goes up the middle and another two-bagger, a one-run scores, another run comes in. McGee's pushes five across before the Little Eagles even batted. Bottom of the first, the slugger, Albert Adriano with that double. Yeah. Austin Diaz, a pop-up over first base and it rolls away. He hustles the second as Adriano comes around. The Legals push across three runs. It was five to three after one. Top of the second, regular season MVP, Dylan Santos. He singles, but the legal defense holds and it was still 5-3 after two innings. Top of the third, pitcher Isaiah Mesa helping his cause with a run scoring double to left field. Goes up the middle and through, and another run touches the dish. Dylan, another hit, and Ezra crosses the plate. Kazu De La Cruz follows with a seeing eye single through the 3 4 hole. Casey Chambers, a number in front of the plate, safe at home, and safe at second. MJ Tudela reaches on that air. He avoids a tag, making it to second while two more runs come in. <laughs> Isaiah, the long fly to right center, and that falls in. McDonald scores eight runs in the top of the third. They were loving it. Bottom of the third, 
Albert with the slicing liner to left. McDonald's had trouble getting the ball back into the infield, and Albert turns on the Jets to make it 13 to four. Top of the fourth, McDonald's goes shopping for insurance and they get it. They added two more runs, taking a 15 to four lead to the bottom of the fourth. <laughs> Isaiah goes the distance. He gets a strikeout to end the game as McDonald's wins with a championship by the 10 run mercy rule, 15 to four. And then they race out to left field to thank their loyal fans out there. Happy meals for everyone. Congratulations to both teams. All right, tomorrow night we're going to show you one of the greatest last inning comebacks you'll ever see as the Comets won the consolation game yesterday. And also a remarkable comeback Saturday that came up short in the minor league championship. All right, let's move over to the hard courts tennis. Today the ITF North Pacific Qualifier Open Play with matches on the PIC and American Memorial Park tennis courts. These regional finals will be used to determine who will be selected to represent the North Pacific team at the Oceania Junior Championships to be held in Fiji next month. NMI boys and girls are competing against players from Palau, FSM, and Guam. All right, coming up, we got a very hot, very warm, very hot weather report. Here's the wind up and the pitch. I don't believe what I just saw! Let's roll at Gold's Gym Saipan with group exercise for every body. Total Resistant Exercise, or TRX, helps develop your core and improve strength. And Zumba toning is probably the funnest way to get fit. The Shake Cafe is a great place to stop by for meal replacement or supplements. Today is the first day of the rest of your life. All right, today's high 89, the heat index 98, although on my phone it was 101. 81, the low, that's not low. Uh, humidity 66%, tomorrow more of the same. High around 90, low 79. Seas are calm out there, three to five feet, but always be careful. Sunrise at 546 in the uh, morning, sunset at 647. Thank you, Bob, for that weather report. All right, well, I don't know what's going to be on tonight, uh, tomorrow night's news, but I imagine this, this PSS salary is going yep. to be a continuing uh, issue. It is. A lot of the teachers are speaking out, even like, you know, concerned citizens and community. Everybody's coming together because a lot of people it's just... It's a lot of people affected. Yeah, a lot of people affected by this. People with kids and uh, obligations mm -hmm. and car payments and... And then CUC needs to be paid, and, and everybody, you know, car yeah. insurance. It's a tumbling paid. effect, it's yeah. All, yeah, so a real it's, ripple effect. A lot of people are uh, concerned about this in a gathering to kind of show show their concern. It's the and big speaking story. Out. I yeah, think that's absolutely. going to be the big story this week. Absolutely. And yeah. you're on top For, of it. I am, I am on top we'll of it. We'll have something tomorrow night? We will, we will. You'll hear more about this, speak with some more people about this, see what's, what's happening next, you know. People so, are yeah. raising their voices, and we'll see if anybody's listening. And Absolutely. Yep. Yeah. All right. Well, thanks for watching. Please do tune in tomorrow night at 6. Good night.